Remember last time we were solving these second order homogeneous recurrence relations? I told you that there's this slick, I mean, this quick way to get the answer where you just take the characteristic equation, you find the roots, and then you just write it down, basically. And that just gives you the general solution. And then if you want a specific solution, you can, uh, yeah, you can, you can get it. Um, so let's derive that using generating functions. So using the kind of ideas we've presented for this non-homogeneous case, I'll show why the solution to the homogeneous case is what it is, why it all boils down to um, characteristic equations. So suppose I give you a homogeneous, um, so this is a general formula for a, like a homogeneous uh, second order linear recurrence relation where C1 is just a number, right? It's just a real number and C2 is just a real number, right? So you can think of C1 as being five and C2 as being something else like negative seven or something, right? These are just numbers, okay? So remember what I told you last time is that basically just if you write down the characteristic polynomial, so it's x squared minus C1x minus C2, you get the roots and that basically, the roots completely determine the general solution. So that's what I wanna to prove to you. So let R1 and R2 be the roots. So this is my characteristic polynomial, and r1 and r2 are the roots, and they might be equal, they might be real numbers, or they might be complex numbers. We have these three different cases. Okay, so in other words, yeah, by the way, so this is the same as saying that x, what, you know, these are the roots means that this thing, uh, the characteristic, sorry, characteristic polynomial here is equal to x minus r1, x minus r2, right? That's what I mean by saying that, that these are the roots. So now for a moment, we're gonna forget about these roots and we're gonna just do some generating function stuff and we'll see how these roots come up later. So let's do our usual step. We just write down the recurrence and we multiply by x to the n on both sides. All right, this is our usual, this is what we've been doing all day today. So we just write a to the n, a, sorry, a n x to the n equals c1, a n minus one x to the n uh, plus c2 a n minus 2 x to the n and then we sum over all the possible values that make sense which is like all the n at least 2. Okay so we get if I take n equals 2 to infinity a n x to the n is uh, c1 a n minus 1 or sorry sum n equals 2 to infinity um, a n minus 1 x to the n plus c2 the same sum except that it's a n minus 2 x to the n. And this is like just repeating the same things over and over, but this is just f of x minus a0 minus a1x. This thing here is just f of x times x minus um, a0 times x, or in other words, it's x times f of x minus a0, and this is just x squared f of x. So like usual, I can just pull all my f of x's to one side and everything else to the other side. So on one side, I'll get f of x from this f of x minus x, uh, sorry, c1. I have to, don't forget about the c1. c1 x f of x uh, minus c2 x squared f of x on one side. And what that equals, so I'll take this stuff to the other side. So a0 plus a1x. And the only thing left over is this one. So plus, sorry, minus x a0. Okay, and that's hopefully, hopefully, ah, sorry, I forgot the C1. This should be C1 x times a zero because there's a C1 here, right? Then I do the usual thing that I factor out an f of x on the left side and I divide by the leftover stuff. So this is what I get. f of x is equal to um, a zero plus a one x minus C1 a zero x over this thing. One weird thing is that this kind of looks like the the denominator here kind of looks like the characteristic polynomial, um, but it's a bit messed up, right? It's kind of backwards. Like it's, remember the characteristic polynomial. So first of all, remember what it was our, um, what was our recurrence is this, right? Our characteristic polynomial was x squared minus c1 x minus c2. So it's kind of like this thing on the bottom is kind of like backwards, right? It's like, you have this x squared here, like everywhere you had a, a, well, so the x is where it used to be, and the, like kind of your x squared term becomes a, a constant term, and your constant term becomes an x squared term, which seems like 
what on earth is it seems like something's wrong but nothing is wrong um, that's exactly what you want so here's my question so and this is maybe tricky but you can definitely work this out um, so remember my characteristic equation is this and I know that r1 and r2 are the roots of my characteristic equation what are the roots of this thing so given that I know the roots of my characteristic equation which is kind of the same thing as this except the squareds are in the wrong place the x squared is kind of in the wrong place it's kind of moved from here to here what are the roots of this um, is it clear what I'm asking here so I claim that if I know the roots of the first polynomial then I actually know the roots of the second polynomial well one thing I can say it's not r1 and r2 um, oh yeah <laughs> so it's not that obvious um, but I claim that it's 1 over r1 and 1 over r2 so imagine I plug in Let's say I plug in 1 over r1 into this thing. I get 1 minus c1, 1 over r1, uh, minus c2, 1 over r1 squared. You could think of trying to put this all on, let's put this all on top of the denominator of r1 squared. So, so to do that, so here I've got a, this is a 1 over r1 squared, right? So I need to multiply this by r1 squared over r1 squared. So I want to put everything on top of this denominator. So that's r1 squared minus, so that one has to be multiplied by c uh, r1 over r1, so that's c1 r1 uh, minus c2. But now I, I can see that on the top, I've got this equation applied at r1. So that's just, so the numerator here is zero because r1 is a root of this equation. So that's just zero. So one over r1 is a root, and similarly one over r2 is a root of this equation. So by knowing the roots of this equation, we have learned what the roots of this other equation is. Um, or yeah, the roots of this polynomial, whatever, quadratic. Okay, so now what we can do is we can take our f of x and we can write it like this. So we can factor the bottom because we know what the roots are. The roots are one over r1 and one over r2. And if you kind of ma manipulate that a little bit and do a bit of algebra, so maybe I will I'll kind of, because time is kind of running out, um, I will kind of just say that, yeah, you can write the bottom as, well, you can write the bottom thing as in this form. But now what does partial fraction tell us? Partial fractions. Um, so we can break this up, right? So this is some polynomial on the top, some constant here. We can break this up into two pieces. So you do have to be careful because of um, what if r1 equals r2, but suppose suppose they aren't equal. So So this can be broken up into a over one minus r1x and b b times or sorry b over one minus r2x unless r1 equals r2 right if r1 equals r2 then you have to do something a little bit different right um, so let's suppose r1 is not equal to r2 first right so we get f of x is something a over one one over one minus r1x b over one minus r2x so what is the answer now uh, so what is what is this um, and by a simple substitution, two simple substitutions, this is a r1 to the n x to the n plus b r2 to the n x to the n, right? So a n is um, a times r1 to the n plus b times r2 to the n for some a and b. This is exactly what I told you was the answer last time, right? So this is this is good. So this is um so this is the the kind of format for the um. You know, because r1 and r2 are from the roots of the characteristic equation, and this is exactly what what we said it was last time. The answer, okay? So it's just the first root and the second root raised to the power n. And by the way, this this also this you know this doesn't it doesn't matter if these are complex or not. So this works uh, whether or not the r1 and r2 are complex. Okay, they could be complex numbers or not. It doesn't really matter. Second case, you have to deal with the case where they're equal. Um, so let's say r1 is r2 and they're both equal to r. Then the partial fraction gives you something different, right? So it gives you that f of x is a over 1 minus rx plus b over uh, 1 minus rx uh, squared, which is, uh, okay, I know how to do these, right? This is like a times uh, r to the n, x to the n plus b times, and technically here I'm going to want to put like an n plus 1 um, r to the n, x to the n. So here what we get is like this. 
which because of this n plus one, it doesn't quite look the same um, as what we had last time, but it doesn't really matter. If you kind of change your, um, because if you kind of pull this out, right, this is just b times r to the n, x to the n plus uh, b times n, r to the n, x to the n, for whatever reason, I've written this backwards kind of, but it doesn't matter, right? Um, so you can write this as like, let's say c, r to the n, x to the n, because this is kind of the same as that, uh, plus d, n, r to the n, x to the n. And this is exactly what I told you the answer was last time. So, so this is just a derivation of uh, the method for solving these homogeneous second order linear recurrence relations.